So I have the honor of sitting here with Will Haygood. He's the author of the book, The Butler, and of course it started off first as an article. Man, he's just got some amazing things going on in life, so let's just have a chat with him. It is so nice to be here with you. Thank you. Well, I feel really comfortable in this space and on this couch with you because you are the most normal. You're just a normal guy, but you've had these wonderful things happen in your life. What keeps you so humble? Um, if I got outside of myself, you know, I have this, you know, fear that one of my relatives uh, would slap me upside my head, <laughs> you know, you know, and so I'm just, you know, I'm just me. It's also said <clears throat> of you that if, if someone emails you, you will email them back, and if they write you, you will write them back. But I also know that you have quite a travel schedule. How did you become so regimented in making sure that you stay connected? Because when I was you know, first starting out dreaming, you know, of being a writer, you know, I would read newspapers and read uh, great stories, you know, the long form stories, and I would get stationary and I would write that writer at the Los Angeles Times or the Dallas Times Herald or the St. Petersburg Times in Florida. I would just, out of the blue, write him a letter. Wow. And the ones who wrote me back, <clears throat> there was only one who wrote me back, this guy named Paul Hendrickson in Washington, D.C. He's still a dear friend of mine to this day. Wow. And the others who didn't write me back, it just seemed so sad that, hey, Here's this guy who's just writing you a little fan note asking for some advice about writing. And they maybe they just took the letter and simply tore it up, you know. And I so just don't, don't know, think... You don't know how you connected, <clears throat> so it, it kind of stuck with you. Yes. Yes. That people wouldn't engage in a simple act of niceness. Uh, or courtesy. Right. You know, just to say, thank you for your nice note about the story I wrote about what happened on the train. Right. Sincerely, uh, you know, Jack. But it seems like it's ingrained in your soul that you make time for people. Like, you made time for the King Arts Complex. You make time for everybody. You know, it's, you know, it's an honor, you know, to be you know, recognized, you know, by such you know, an important uh, arts organization uh, in a cultural institution. Right. You know. I, I think that when I grow up, I'm going to try to have some principles the way you do. Oh, well. And the fact that, uh, it, just the fact that you go back to the community and you give your own community the opportunity to, to, to be in that joy with you yep instead of saying no well you know these other higher-ups are calling for me I'll go there first what how did you decide you would you would stay stay grounded that way I run into people you know well known you know and I'll ask them sometimes about their hometown you know their mayor you know, what's going on and they're clueless mm -hmm which means that they have dropped off of the radar. Right, they're no longer connected. Right, and that to me, you know, it just seems very uh, sad. I mean... I get that. You, 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 you know, it's just like, you know, that's the landscape that nurtured you, mm -hmm. you know, for, for better or for worse. That's where you first breathed air. That's where you first saw men in Stetson shoes. That's where you first went to church. That's where you first learned how to swim. Right. There's so a lot of... This was your nest and why abandon it? Right. I mean... Um, what do you want to say to young professionals? Uh, there's, um, there's so many young professionals, and as you talked about, you know, being a dreamer, 
so many people that want to live their dreams. What advice do you have for people that may have gotten stuck or they're not sure if, uh, if, if the dream is really for them? Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that doors will close on you as you embark on that journey. Uh, but the beautiful thing about life, I think, is that uh, more doors will open than will close. Oh. And you just have to be able to not grow sullen or uh, dispirited when those few doors, when they close. I remember the week I got my first newsroom job in Charleston, West Virginia, uh -huh. two weeks before I had written the editor at the Kansas City Star and I had applied for a job and he, he or she, I, mean, I can't remember, this was like in 1979. So it was probably a he. Yeah, you're right. It's probably <laughs> a he. remembering the time. He, uh, they said that uh, you're one of three finalists. Uh, uh, and that made you feel For this right. copy editing job. Okay. And I put so much into that I hoped so much. And I remember uh, it had to be a family emergency to make a long distance phone call. So I got a lot of quarters and I walked up on High Street and made a call to Kansas City wow. to the newsroom. And I talked, asked to speak to the editor. And she said, who is this? And I said, well, hey, good. And she knew what I was calling it about. And she said, uh, Mr. Hey, good, I'm sorry. Um, it's not going to work out for you here, oh. uh, but uh, yeah. you obviously have some talent, and we hope that you will continue to look uh, for a job in newspapers. And I felt bad, but not too bad, where I was ruined of my mission to keep looking. Mm -hmm. And a week later, I applied to Charleston, West Virginia. And Bam! Job. And that's the job I got. Do you think that's what happens to a lot of people? Do you think that um, people don't really know how to handle disappointment and it ruins them? I think it sometimes forces them to change up from what they really want to do. Mm. I mean, I just knew that I was going to get on to a uh, newspaper someplace and I remember I was living here and I got the job in Charleston West Virginia and a lot of my friends said man why you want to go to West Virginia <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ <laughs> man what are you gonna be living in the mountains man you know and, and you my thing I'm, yeah, my thing was I needed to train I needed to get to know the rhythm of a newsroom uh, um, and not be afraid of being around editors and writers. I just needed to learn the terminology of a newsroom at a daily newspaper. Right. How, where did you get the Where did you get the guidance to know what you needed? I mean, who told you that you needed to? It's hard. People have asked me that before, and I guess one of the ways to answer is in the uh, 10th grade at East High School, I was cut from the basketball team, cut. You know, and that's a disheartening moment for a kid. Mm -hmm. you know, you're 15 imagine. years old and everybody in the school sees the sign on the coach's door, who made the team? Right. And your name's not on there and you're just crushed. And that night, I said to myself, I've got to alter this. I've got to fix this. So the next morning I went and knocked on the coach's door. He said, may I help you? I said, coach, I know I got cut. I didn't make the team, but I want to know if I can have a second chance. And he looked at me like I was a little nut. <laughs> and I said, I just didn't show you the best that I could out there on the court. And he said, are you telling me that I don't know how to coach? I said, no, 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 no. I'm just telling you, Coach, that I need this opportunity and I would like to have one more chance. 
One more chance, right. Coach. So I'm sure he couldn't have turned you down. He let me come to practice that night. Uh -huh. And at the end of practice, he said, okay. He clapped his hand and said, okay, great practice. I'll see everybody tomorrow. And people had fouled off and went to the locker room. I said, Coach, does that mean me too? And he said, didn't I say everybody? <laughs> and against South High School, I ended up starting. Mm -hmm. So how do you go from being cut right, to, back on, to back on the team and starting mm -hmm. um, in some of the games? So so how, how do you? I, what, what, what's the key? It was more than just you going back to the coach. I, 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 I think some of it is a fear of failure. Mm -hmm. You know, a fear of failure and a love of wanting to su to succeed. Okay. You know. Fear of failure. You know. But a love of wanting to succeed. You want to succeed more than you fear that failure. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Failure wasn't going to make me stop. But the love or the possibility of succeed would make me find another way to get around that obstacle. Mm -hmm. So finish a sentence, if you will. <clears throat> The older I get, oh, the more I realize the power of the written word. So you know your your magic. Do you know this uh, about you? No, I no, I wouldn't say that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you cer you certainly are someone special, not just because of your accomplishments, because you you really have accomplished a lot. Oh, thank you. Just your sense of humanity and normalcy when you're with people. Oh, thank you, thank you. One of my books here are missing, right? Uh, yes. The Hey Goods. Okay. <laughs> I had to correct Greg on stage last night. He said, hey, the four books you were in. I said, whoa, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute, man. You know, it's, it's six. Right. It's six, buddy. That's right. You know that blood, sweat, and tears you, you put into it. That's right. That's great. Well, congratulations on your tremendous thank success. You. And thank you for sharing yourself with us through your writing and through your humanity thank of you. being here. Thank you. Hardy, congratulations on your upcoming uh, marriage. Thank you help other writers, other people coming up to, to yeah. something start blowing on the embers in their souls. So that's what people need. Yeah. That was well Thank said. You. Well said, man.